Financial is aiming to be the first fintech to become a Schedule One bank. The startup is backed in part by the Demeray family and was recently valued at about $800 million. And it has ambitions to disrupt an industry dominated by a handful of players. For a look at the road to becoming a bank, let's bring in Daniel Eberhard, founder and CEO of Coho Financial. Daniel, thank you so much for joining me. This is, uh, as I understand, a kind of phase two of what's been a multi-year journey for Coho to become that Schedule One bank. Talk to me about what this phase entails. Yeah, so you, you can probably think of phase one as agreeing to the plan that you've set out with OSFI and ultimately the Department of Finance um, for what the bank will look like, what it will do. And then you could think of phase two as kind of putting the meat on the bone. So who's going to sit on the board? We're going to have these risk control policies. Let's talk about what they are. Let's uh, And so it's really kind of like fleshing out and operationalizing all of this process. This phase will last anywhere from 18 to 24 months. And then if we're successful there, you get what called your letters to commence, which means that you can go and operate a bank. You'll operate under a supervised period for six months following that, and then you're off to the races. Okay, off to the races and then competing with some pretty big horses. We know we're dominated by just a handful of large players that up until now have proved pretty indisruptible. Yeah, I mean, I think that we have done a great job of managing systemic risk in this country. I think that there's a lot to be proud of in our banking legacy. Um, many of these institutions are 100 years old. I have a, a great deal of respect for them. But I think that we have not done a great job of fostering competition. I think there has historically been a myth that somehow competition and systemic stability are opposing forces. Mm -hmm. I think that the inverse of that is true. Uh, and that's been referenced in World Bank study after World Bank study. So, you know, we are, we, it's certainly not zero sum. Our Banks are not going anywhere, but we think there is a very uh, specific need that we can serve in this market, and, and we think having a bank license is a big part of our ability to do so. Let's talk about that specific need. Where are you finding the wedge? Yeah, so we've done a couple things uh, at Coho today. So you can get 5% on your deposits. That's a great interest rate. Uh, the, the two areas that we've kind of really spiked are, are lending. And so, you know, we've now lent out hundreds of millions of dollars at this company. Uh, the vast majority of folks have never owed us more than $5 in fees. The most I think anybody's owed us is $15 in fees. Um, and so we found ways to lend and to underwrite to segments that are not well served by the bank in ways that uh, I think are much fairer and much better than the existing options. That's one thing. We've built a couple products which build, which help build and establish credit history, which is particularly important for young people or new to country folks. Um, and we'll continue to kind of play on how do we actually help folks earn more money? How do we actually increase their earnings is a new space for us. And so, uh, you know, we've got, you, you could kind of think of this as all of the product innovation that we have done today has been constrained mm. to the surface level of banking. But if you really want to win in this area, and change things up. I do think you need to play at the infrastructure level, and that's what we're trying to do with this. And, and you've said that there is going to be a person kind of in charge of this if you do get the green light, and it's somebody who we used to frequently report on in Peter Asicho. He's the former CEO of Tangerine, but also we reported on him because of his association with CanTrust at a time that they were yeah. accused of illegally growing marijuana. He was charged but later acquitted. What does he bring to the team with that banking background? But are you concerned about the legacy issues associated with CanTrust at a time where you are in front of regulators? No. So so there's, there's two components. In, on the bank side, look, I think Peter was the CEO of, of Tangerine and, and what was ING Direct, which is you know one of the the few tr like innovative players in this space and so i think he brings a great deal of credibility with osfi and uh banking expertise really matters this isn't an area where you want to kind of break everything you do it is worthwhile to be deferential to the folks who have come before you and, and really understand how these things work and what you can and can't do um and so on the banking lens that that's true look on the on the can trust lens you know i that's a tough characterization and i think if you're going to take risks in a new industry um uh, you know, I think that that can be part of the game, and and all those charges were dropped. It's it's actually kind of a shame we're talking about them because they were dropped, and and I think largely erroneous. And and so we knew that going in. Peter was on honest about it. We were honest about it, and it's something that we're going to have to navigate. But I don't think it it should preclude him from working in banking again or doing innovative things again. I mentioned that you're backed in part by the Demeray family, and they've collected this uh, ecosystem of startups, uh, whether it's Wealth Simple, Borrow Well, Coho. What does it mean to be part of that ecosystem? 
I mean, I think that they, they've more than perhaps any large company in Canada uh, really seeded the next generation of innovation in this country. And so, so it's really an honor. They, they are a high integrity group and they could have very, very easily not done any of this stuff. They have very big properties in Canada life and investors group and, and many other things. And so it's pretty rare for an organization to lean into innovation and disruption the way that these folks have. Um, and and so you know we've we've got a wonderful working relationship with them. I think people tend to see it as this sort of ecosystem. It's it's really not. It's it's three independent entities with different goals, and and you know they happen to have a thesis about underwriting fintech in Canada. But beyond that, they're not. There's no some you know some Machiavellian scheme to stitch these things together. It's it's fairly Darwinian beyond that. Um, we are uh, speaking of which we always like to know with these companies that are that are raising money and have these valuations. How do you think about going public? Yeah, I mean, I think that it is uh, certainly, so I think that the practices in going public are very useful. Uh, I think that increasing my own personal bias is, I think if you don't manage it correctly, it can create a lot of noise and a lot of bad short-term incentives. And so I'm, I'm very mindful of that. Um, but many of the products, the many of the processes that public companies do are, are very worthwhile. And so, you know, we are getting to that size and stage and scale that that is an option for us. Um, it's not anything we're, we're thinking about in the short term. I think we've got bigger, bigger things on the horizon. And, uh, but you know, we, we do have that profile if we wanted to, but I, I don't think we're there for the next 18 months for sure. Have you thought about what happens if you don't get that check mark to be a schedule one? Um, how do you proceed going yeah. forward? Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I think that we've we've tried to be honest and consistent that this is a, a high risk process. We're going to learn a lot of things through this process. Um, you know, it may be that that OSFI does not uh, we don't fit with OSFI, or it may be that we just find the the regulations and the overhead too burdensome. Uh, we've been upfront with our concerns, and and OSFI has um, heard those, and and we're trying to build a great partnership with those folks. But so 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 to answer your question we would never outsource the success of our company predicated on one thing, especially something as like hard and complicated as getting a bank license. And so, you know, we will have plan B's if we don't get a bank license, we've got a lot of wood to chop in getting a bank license. So we're, we're really treating this as, as a nice to have rather than a must have, but it's uh, we, if we can do it, we're, we're really excited about the, the value that it'll let us create for customers. 